Okay, so uh, we're here at Capital Innovations Toronto Venture Forum at the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Toronto. And we have the pleasure to be with Blake Witkin, uh, one of the co-founders of Maple Leaf Angels and also a board member of uh, the Network of Angel Organization of Ontario. Very good. Well, I remember. <laughs> you did well, you did well. Appreciate so, um, uh, Blake, uh, you were telling me uh, before uh, we started talking that um, uh, you're an entrepreneur turned investor. Uh, so maybe we can start by uh, talking a bit about how, how you made the, the transition. Sure, and um, I, I'd be happy to. Um, without belaboring my history, I, I went to business school in the 1980s, Ivy Business School. Um, and it was very corporate training and I really always wanted to be in small classes and involved with uh, growing entrepreneurial businesses. But at that time, that culture of startup hadn't taken hold. Uh, but I joined a small, smaller company, in fact, a company you might have heard of called Candarel, which is a major property developer in uh, Montreal. And uh, I worked for them for some very entrepreneurial people. Um, but then there was a major readjustment of the market in Canada in Toronto real estate and I found that uh, the business was not going to continue like in the past and I had a tenant that was in high tech and I got involved with them. They made a fax switch uh, which allowed um, a phone to switch between a fax and a phone using distinctive ring signals and that was the beginning of getting involved in entrepreneurship and I, I learned from somebody all the ins and outs of small business. Right. But the business wasn't going where I wanted as fast and eventually I got involved with a bunch of guys and put a little money into a startup called Image Processing Systems. And at that time I was in my late 20s and it was quite an exciting time. Uh, we were making industrial image processing systems. We made image processing engines out of the latest uh, computer uh, processors available to look at computer monitors when they were being manufactured, right. TVs and, and computers. And we started off selling this in Canada. But very quickly we found, with free trade coming in, that the markets were all over the world and our company started to grow. And I traveled all over the world opening our markets, selling computer vision systems to companies like Samsung and LG and Mitsubishi. And our company grew at a very fast rate. And this was very interesting. We went from uh, nine people and uh, 100,000 in sales, and we, we did 300% growth a year. So it went 300,000, a million, 10 million, 30 million, and we went to hundreds of people, and it was exhilarating, exhausting experience, and all of a sudden actually it was the biggest company I'd ever worked in. It was very <laughs> interesting. Um, and eventually, at the end, close to the end of 10 years of doing this and building the organization, we merged with a company called Photon Dynamics out of San Jose, California, the Valley. And then eventually, uh, they got acquired by Orbitech out of Tel Aviv, Israel, the largest printed circuit board inspection system company. And at that point, I kind of wanted to start over again, and I set up a private office, and I started to get involved in angel investing. Um, and we formed the Maple Leaf Angels when there was an opportunity. And uh, put, I put some money into a bunch of deals, but at the same time, I started up with actually in the MP3 space. I was really? one of the first people with the company company we created called Moby Blue. I had a partner from Korea and we were at the Consumer Electronics Show and we had a Cube MP3 player which was the lead item in 2005 for Walmart.com. Wow. And we sold 100,000 of those and it was exciting and fun but I always knew Consumer Electronics cycle would end very quickly. So one of the themes here is you got to constantly reinvent my, myself and you got to reinvent your markets especially in technology right. because it's, it's always changing so quickly. So quickly. And I started partnering up with a company I'd been asked, a startup to be on the board with, somebody I'd worked with for 20 years in image processing systems, 10 years, and I've known them 20 years now, called Atrovision. And we make test systems for the, um, primarily for uh, the development of the semiconductors that are used in the cameras in cell phones. This is a Blackberry, one of our clients. And uh, we've developed a market, a small business, high tech, uh, where our clients are again, Nokia and Samsung and LG and companies like this uh, around the world, RIM, Apple, suppliers uh, of their cameras and they use our technology, our image processing subsystem which is now this big as we've been able to compress all the electronics um, 
and it continues to be exciting and interesting, and I'm still always looking at new things and interested. So I love that it's company you invested in, or you're actually we've involved, been able, we've actually been able to grow this with no investment, and we've accumulated a lot of sales, uh, well over a million and a half dollars last year. Uh, we have. We don't even have three people in the company. Um, we uh, we are doing. We, we, one thing I've learned is we keep the costs very low. We run a very low overhead, and we um, we grow kind of organically. So far, so good. Uh, and Nokia is a big client. I was just uh, the month before last in Finland meeting with Nokia and doing our next phase of generation development. So are you using the, the connections you build in your past Absolutely. businesses to leverage Absolutely. those in this one? When I was in image processing system, we did a lot of visits to Japan. Through that, I use a contact uh, who now lives in Japan and at one time was in Canada, he's from Japan, and he's handling all our business in Japan. So you leverage your contacts, you need to network all the time and right. meet people, you have to be open-minded about the technology, and you have to know what your areas of strength. I can relate myself to hardware and things that you can kind of see. I have more touch. That's yeah, kind of cloud-based. Right. Example. I have more difficulty. For example, cloud-based I can understand, but I find, for example, social media investment. Right. I find difficult. Not to say I haven't. I've invested in some. One of them's called um, Official Community Corporation. They have a website. They represent rock bands, and they handle every all their web-based activities. But I could, I guess, relate to it. Maybe I understood their customers. <laughs> Uh, but there are many businesses where uh, it's more, you have to stay what you're comfortable with. I don't touch biotech because biotech is determining whether a molecule is going to be commercially successful. I don't profess to understand, to be able to feel comfortable to well, understand that. You can understand every field. If you're, right. if you're good in one field and you, you know you can be successful and you can bring value to the company you're with and then this is how you can make money, right? Yes, yes. And I still find that I actually don't have any great ideas. What I have is the ability to work with people who have great ideas and want to take them through the commercialization, commercialization phase, through the initial uh, growth of the company to a larger company. That's my personal sweet spot. So I think everybody has to find what they're good at, uh, what they like to do, and play to those strengths. That's great. Well, uh, thank you very much. And do, to end uh, this, uh, do you have a final comment, like a word of advice or wisdom that you give? Uh, well, uh, the only thing I would say, um, you know, everybody wants things to come quickly. You have to have patience and persistence. This sounds like a cliche, but my experience, um, and the number of one thing I was taught, and it goes back to the beginning of my career in property, which I was trained by somebody who's now running Omer's Investments. Uh, and we had Omer speak today. Yeah, well, his boss's boss, actually. Uh, he and I worked together, and he taught me, pay attention to the things where uh, your weakest points are when you're in the development cycle of commercialization or product. Pay attention to those things. If you have a great idea that you're working with, the upside will take care of itself. Manage the downside, because that's where you can get hurt and, and your idea and your work can get destroyed. So manage the downside, be patient, persistent, and uh, good luck. Great, well thank you very much for uh, being here and uh, good luck with your ventures. Thank you very much.